It's cold. It's cold. It's gonna get cold though. Only for a while. Two month a two month winter basically is what we have here. And then because we're on the Greek and Turkish border, we're lucky. We're lucky. <coughs> It'll get hot quick. It could be even eighty degrees tomorrow. And you never know. Anyway, it's the third of uh, October. 2016 uh, and it's an active day it's going to be an active week I, I'd say we've got two months to really fix up and clean up this dollar issue the basket issue and so on we don't have much time uh, this is this should be the week where the, where the, the final signature comes on the con on the paper though but it's still going to drag on uh, the dollar is going to weaken uh, tremendously and the US corporation when I say corporation I mean corporation they don't own us they never did they stole us they don't own us we don't owe any debt they do I'll tell you that story too that they were going to uh, that they were going what they were going to do to us with the uh, in order to pay that debt. Okay, let's go into what I've been avoiding for about a week or two. Let's, you know, it's been bullshit, but we'll deal with it right now, just touch it. For example, everybody's making claims to the collateral accounts. The question for me, does it have anything to do with the fact that I've been ill for the last six or seven months? Uh, it wasn't just being ill. I was ill. Uh, I had been poisoned again. And it affected sugar. It affected acid. It affected everything, really. And uh, they found 14 blue caps, they called them, in the, my body at the, uh, the healing, with the healing computer in uh, Germany. And we got out. We got out. They knocked out eight of them, I believe. And there's been another three knocked out, and then another one's gone. One opened up just recently inside me, which has made me feel bad again uh, within the last week. But they, we're going to get them all, according to the healing machine. Is, is amazing because it picked up things that I I knew of, but nobody else did. And, and, X-rays didn't show it, and scans didn't show it, but this thing picked it up. This amazing machine. Uh, it told me I had a problem right in the middle of my back, at the top, where the neck, the neck bone basically is connected to the backbone, uh, the spine, and uh, it's a, it, it's quite the thing, because I'm the only one who who knows where it is, and I'm the only one who knows how much it hurt at the time. Uh, I didn't tell anybody exactly where, but this machine picked it out. It had it right on the machine. It had the spot. I, I keep saying to myself, "Wow!" But nevertheless, I'm feeling much better because of that machine. Now we'll go back to that. Let's get into this stuff that's been going on here with Swiss Indo and their make-believe bullshit that they throw around the world. We're going to take care of everybody. With the Committee of 300, the hidden hand, the this, the that, P2 Lodge. Swiss Indo is nothing, has never been anything, but they go out and make noise and they probably have a good party. That's it. They don't have any offices in Jakarta like they said. We've been there. You saw the video when myself and Inchel went to visit. They had never heard of them. So, that beautiful building that just has nothing to do with them. They can't afford the rent. Now, forget Swiss Indo. Okay, forget Karen Hooters or Hades, whatever you want to call her. She's just another waste of time, too, from the days when the Germans said that the Americans owed 500 metric tons of gold to them. And then she found out from us that the Germans owed the Americans the money because the Germans were taking money to finance their war from the United States and England. England and the United States financed World War II for Germany, okay? And they used to go and pick up their money and come back to Europe. And they'd have the money they needed for the war. That's the bottom line. And it added up to a lot more than 500 metric tons of coal. When Karen Hudis found that out, all of a sudden she was on our boat. Karen Hudis is not on our boat. That's the other question. She's not 
a reliable person. She's all over the place. She didn't know what the collateral accounts were when I first spoke with her. Uh, I mean, enough about Karen Hudis, okay? It, Karen Hudis is out there. She's getting paid by the other side to create misinformation and to, and to create chaos. That's it. Don't need to hear any more Karen Hudis. I don't anyway. Unless I want to laugh. Like a good comedy show for you now and then. Now, let's get to the... What will I do with the accounts once they're signed over to me? I'll start designating teams. I'll start putting teams together of people, which I've been doing for three years. And I'll start getting things out, not right away. The legal things have to happen first. And uh, I do want to go after all the cabal corporations because they've been, they've been stealing from us for 100 years. Let's say 100 years, okay, use a number. And they've been feeding us poisons for 100 years, from the baby food to the canned food to macaroni and cheese and everything else that we've been getting as a child, which we thought was real good. And all of a sudden, it turns out to be that they've had all kinds of toxins within them, killing our babies. Still to this day, they but they're getting caught now. The other day was Quaker Oats, which, man, that was a staple of my youth, one of them, you know. And then you've got and, and, uh, Gerber baby food. And you've got all those canned foods with the peas and the corns and everything else. And They taste good, but you find out they're putting plastics and stuff in it. And then sugar coating it, coating it. So they're, they're really tainting our bodies. And that's why they probably go kosher. Because they're eating what they know is good. And they're leaving the shit to us. The shit they create. Now, I'm not talking Jews. Okay? I'm talking Kazarians. I'm talking the Sauruses and, uh, and Jacob Rothschild. And, uh, Evelyn, how can you have a brother like that? Jesus, you're not a bad guy, and you got this guy walking next to you who, my God, it, people, people think the same thing about you as they do about him. That's another story, too, for another time. I know that, too. But anyway, when we get to this, these, these, uh, these accounts opened, which seems like it's never going to happen, it seems sometimes to me, because we're so close. There's not that, that much further to go. I mean, when I came home last time in December, I expected to uh, come home for Christmas, have a nice Christmas, nice New Year, get on the... Uh, get on a plane and go back and finish up. What I found was somebody who started stealing our assets, or my money, from my accounts in uh, not only France, but here as well. And the person here is in jail right now. But the other guy is still in France, and uh, he's trying to make an offer to me, but he can't make me an offer. I can't, I, I can't, I can't refuse. <laughs> I, I refuse his offer. I refuse it. It's not. Uh, it's not a good enough offer because this guy is facing jail time, and he is one of the wealthy cabal. And I don't know why he put himself in that position to steal when he has so much already. Too much. Too much. But he thought. I guess he thought he could buy his way out. The judge. I don't know. He tried. So we had the money. And then the transfers were blocked. It's, it's, it's everything went crazy. Everything went bad. At one time, the Vanguard got in the way of the money coming here. Vanguard, by the way, Nasco is uh, the Judge Bush family. They didn't want me to have my money, so I get stuck. I get stuck. I don't like asking, so uh, I let it go for a long time. But I was still sick too. Remember. <coughs> We're going to have to have security teams this time. Even when I go there initially, and a lawyer. You know, and uh, we got a lot of things here that happen. HSBC is being cleared out. As you know, there's a lot of people getting in trouble at the HSBC. That's the Dragon family. 
just so you know, it's the family. They're the ones, uh, we'll put sister in there. She got a battery of people. She came in and she started cleaning it up. And she is cleaning it up. And they're not any better than her. She's got a computer brain now where all she knows is numbers and things. And you start talking about banking and she can rattle it all off for you in a matter of a second. She's brilliant. Uh, I've never seen anything like her in my life. And uh, I'm glad she's on my side. She's a friend. That's how I see it. Okay, now let's go. Let me tell you. Right now, the same things are happening now <coughs> that happened. They were happening last time. The Ban Ki Moon stories about how he was in uh, in Asia, trying to steal all the gold that he could get for the United Nations for. actually Wall Street to keep them alive and uh, South Korea told them to go to hell and the Chinese didn't uh, even extend a hand he, he went there on an unofficial visit I mean he was desperate and then after the Chinese let him go he, uh, made, he had people make phone calls to the Emperor of Japan who suddenly resigned because he wasn't gonna put his neck out there any further either you see in Asia there's a lot of cabal running around, not just trying to buy gold, but they're trying to find places to live, places to hide, because we're at them. We're on them now. We're on them. That lawsuit that, ben, that I filed a long time ago, when Benjamin said, this is the case that's going to that's gonna break open the doors on Western financial attorney. Benjamin, at that time I thought you were crazy. Now I think you're prophetic, because uh, I didn't understand the... The, the overall sphere of things, it's so huge and uh, there's so much going on that uh, I just didn't know and uh, it, 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 what that did was it opened the doors and it touched on everything. It showed that you couldn't trust these people. It shows that you didn't want them around you because they would steal from you and that's what happened in my case. I was naive. I was young. I was so much younger than today. Uh, so, yes, it began with that. And then everybody started jumping aboard the boat. And, you know, we got Monaco in there, and all of a sudden Monaco turned into NAM, non aligned members. And then NAM turned into, Monica, uh, turned into uh, BRICS. I started screaming about an Eastern Bank. We need our own bank. We got AIB, you know. We've got the United Nations is being, one of their buildings is being built in, in China right now. They've got the platform for it already. The foundation's built. It's going up. So you're not going to have it in New York much longer. But then again, you keep talking about how much it costs to keep the, U, the UN going. The UN didn't cost you anything. The Dragon family paid for it. The family paid for that forever, just so you know. On top of all that, we, we still have the Bushes and... Ban Ki-moon is still thinking about running for president next year in South Korea. Trying to get his hands on the gold that's in South Korea. The people trying to get their gold on the gold in Sri Lanka. We got people we got we have people everywhere in Indonesia. We got the World Economic Forum already there. Invited over by Johannes Riades. Invited over. Johannes Riades is Chinese. What the hell is he doing inviting World Economic Forum over over to uh, to the Shangri La for? Hmm? They had a nice meeting and they said, we're going to invest a lot of money here. Now you're looking to steal the money, you're looking to kill the people. That's what you're doing, Bruno. Giancarlo Bruno was the thief in my case. He works with World Economic Forum. He's in charge of financing that. And I'm going to tell you, Bruno, you're going to bump heads with me again and again and again and again. And I'm going to keep, keep kicking your ass. Okay? I really don't give a shit about you. So get that through your head. All of you over there. Every goddamn one of you. Now, let's go further. Screw them. That's what you're saying, Russ. Screw them. Just saying. 
you got the go hard, man. That's a, that's the crazy thing. Uh, you know, if you really want to know how this thing works, all you have to do is, it's, it's so big, so vast. Uh, all you really have to do is, you let's look at a newspaper. Uh, let's look at a newspaper. You think about this as a as global, okay? As everything we do. To make a newspaper, you need paper. They have their hands in it. To make a newspaper, you need ink. They have their hands in it. To make a newspaper, you need printing machines, printing presses. They have their hands in it. They own them. To make a newspaper, you have to distribute it. They have their hands in that too. They hire you. You work for them. Everything we have they put together. All the bail, the bailouts go to them. The bail-ins will go to them as well. We're just fodder to them. They've set it up from the beginning that no matter what it looks like and how much they give us, they created the middle class. And, you know, and we have to get that back. Etienne Davinois, the ex-chairman of Society General and acting chairman at the time of Bilderberg, that was, given, that was, that was his order to take down the middle class. And we need to establish, reestablish the middle class, which is easy enough to do. You know, we're not going to have, we shouldn't have any more hop now. We shouldn't have any more chemtrails because right now the, the shit has basically hit the fan. And I think that they're going to, the, the, those who haven't acquiesced to the demands of uh, China or Russia, they're uh, they're going to be in crap. I mean, they're not going to be needed nor wanted. They might be taken away and never seen again. That's okay with me. If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. See, I think they all should be taken away and never be seen again, because all they've been is hurtful to the planet and to the people for many, many years, including the Pope. I mean, we had a Pope. Last good pope we had, I think, is John Paul II. And matter of fact, I knew him, and uh, had some fun. He's a, he was a good guy, fun guy. And this guy here, in the meanwhile, comes in and says, after he gets rid of uh, Benedict, and the and they, they they kill John Paul, then they bring in Benedict, who's a Nazi. And they try the Jesuits try to slide him in, and now they've got this Pope Francis. I mean, come on. The guy gets up there and he says, we made a mistake. We've been telling you for, for how many years? We've been telling you that that Jesus is the Son of God. And God is God. And, and uh, you got to help us because we're the church and we're the, we're, we're, we're the middleman to your your master, your, your savior. So you got to take care of us. And we'll, we'll go to the main man and talk in your behalf. Okay, that was always my problem as a kid in Catholic school. Is I used to tell my priest, Father Kylie, I used to say, Father, in grade two, Father, I got in trouble for this. Not with the priest, but with the, the nun. I said, Father, I got in trouble. I was in trouble already for not going to confession. And uh, he came, he was brought into the classroom to talk to me. I said, but Father, when you teach us catechism, I said, you tell us that he knows everything we're doing at all times and he can hear everything. He can read our thoughts. If all this is, is, is as you say, why do we need you? He already knows. He started scratching his head, and he, he, he looked at me, and he said, I'll talk to you later, Neil. <laughs> and that was a great too. And he still can't answer the question today. So it's sort of funny. But he's a great guy. Fantastic man, Father Kylie. They're not one of those guys, okay? He's a real guy. The real deal. So if that's the case... How can this man be up there right now telling us hundreds of years later, thousands, that Jesus Christ is the bad guy, God's the bad guy, and Lucifer, the devil, the son of God, or the son of Zeus, I think it was, uh, uh, is the light. Is the light. After all the, these years, they're putting a spin on us so they can bring in their... Uh, pedophilia, all their bad all their bad tendencies they're bringing in and they want to put up and display and tell us all oh, now this is how we should behave. I think I think we know we have a ethical belief right now, a moral belief that in something. 
and I think that uh, we want to stay good, and we don't want to swing to the to, to the dark side. That's all. We don't need him to tell us that with his sorry ass, weak face, running around trying to make believe that he's something special, when all he is is just another person, not even another person, but a vile one. Now, as for the debt. <coughs> They were going to collect, <clears throat> wait, do you hear this, Nusk? They were going to pay off the U.S. debt by killing off the U.S. people. They planned on killing off 80% of the people in the world, okay, through their Agenda 21, which turned into Agenda 30. They had insurance, insurance on all of us. They had all kinds of things placed on us. And if they had gotten their hands on us and we hadn't fought back like we did and done the things we did to tie them up, they were going to kill us, one way or another, with the electronic guillotines, which which literally tear your head off. They come up behind you and they... It's true. They, they, they had 13,000 of these made. Uh, Cheney made them, Halliburton. You go in, you sit in your chair like this, you're all drugged up. You get strapped into your seat and this thing comes from behind you. And it puts your head in its robotic hands and it strikes your head and your head comes off. I mean, it's it's so powerful. It comes off, and they, they've already started using them in Oklahoma, from what I understand, three or four of them, and you don't even know what's happening. You can't feel that they've drugged you so, so well, but you're gone. You're gone. So we could use those machines on them now, if we wish, because of what they've done to us. That, that was what I was going to get at. We don't owe a dime. They owe the money. They're going to use us, like they used our birth certificates. They're going to use our life insurance and our death certificates to collect as well. Unbelievable, huh? As for Trump and his taxes, forget about it. He made the best moves in the history of business, maybe, because he, he could write off $900 million in, in, in losses over a nine-year a nine period. <coughs> they don't like it. He's smarter than them. He's not a, he's not a politician. He's made that clear. He's not a politician, he's not going to be. As for the state of Hawaii, the confiscation of the state of Hawaii, the theft of the state of Hawaii back in 1890s with uh, the Queen Lily Kalani, just giving them the right to use the, 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 the place for a little while, they ended up losing it to the feds for good. Well, Kelly Yee is the king of Hawaii, and his great grandmother is Lily Kalani. The bloodline is there. Kelly, we're going to be able to make an effort to get this back to you with a, with a very strong legal team once we get rolling on this. We're going to be coming after them. We're coming after the banks. We're coming after, we're coming after them all. The IRS is, uh, is, is not a, a, a federal agency. It's a corporation as well, just like the United States USA Inc. is a corporation. It's not anything more. I mean, we shouldn't, they shouldn't be our bosses. We shouldn't be working for them. They stole the... They stole the country in 1871 or 1861, and they've been using, they've been frigging around with us ever since. And we've been paying, we've been paying the boss, even though we thought we were free and we could do what we wanted to do. We never really could. We were, their rules were our rules. When I connect the dots, getting back to it about the newspaper, okay, it's it's everything we know. Everything we have is the same, from the bottom to the, to the top. They've, they've really, really, they made this place with not with their money, with our money. They started with their money, became our money. So I mean, they made this place, and they don't want to let it go, and they've screwed up big time with these fiats and derivatives and so and everything else. And, and, and let's just say their war is over with. They have debt, big debt. Not us. That's why Anna says there's two dogs in this in this fight, and we're not one of them. But we have to be one of them because we're being pieced out. We're going to be the third. We're being pieced out, piece by piece. I mean, even at Hammond Estate, in uh, which one of Peter Santilli is involved in out there in Utah, I guess Oregon. It's uh, it, it's a mess, and it didn't belong to them to these people, those people to begin with. I hope Peter gets out soon. They labeled him a lot of things, including a traitor and non-patriot. Peter's a patriot. 
Peter's a great man, a great kid. He, he, and, he, and all he did was try to help people. You know, he liked to get in the middle of the mix. He, was, he liked the action. So do I. The other part, you know, the uh, getting this thing over with, I thought we'd be much better off. I mean, we we did pretty good. Not not good, but pretty good with uh, our team, with our group. And uh, it's, it's a Keenan thing and so on, neilkeenan.com. But, you know, the key was for a group in Minnesota to uh, come through. And, you know, we were, paying, we were not paying attention so much. We weren't, our group, Group K, because we thought that this was all going to be handled, only to find out that they, 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 they didn't know anything about it, really. Uh, they, I think they're sheeple. I think they sleep. Now, as for the debt, just so you know, even that debt that we're talking about, that huge amount of money, that huge amount of money, what if I told you with one signature we could wipe the debt off? What if I told you that I can buy a bunker? Or two bunkers? Or three bunkers? Or twelve? I can. I can. I can do that. So there's no reason for us to panic other than the fact <laughs> I don't have the money to do all that. But, but the bottom line here is that you can see that they want to, to destroy the dollar. Yes, they can't uh, destroy the dollar until they, they're, they're sitting nice and comfortably with the gold that they purchase or steal, as I said earlier in the, the video. and. And they'll hold on to the dollar until then. So we've got a couple of months, maybe maybe a month or two. After that, the dollar is destroyed. But by then, I think we'll have been running on a different motor anyway. And everything will be good for us. Not bad. But I think we have to, we have to watch out for ourselves because we've been letting somebody else watch out for us too long. And we've already had the... We've already allowed the fox into the hen house once, and, and for a hundred and some years, or two hundred years even maybe, from what I, I, I read, and you, you don't really want them back in again. You don't really want to extend that hand again when this is your house, and you've got to run it properly, and you've got to get off your asses and, and, and stop taking for granted that somebody's going to take care of you. They're, they're not obligated to take care of you, even if we vote and put them in there. We've got a bunch of bums. First of all, that we put in there, you put a person like Obama in there, who brought a man in as his wife. I mean, kids from Morocco, who, who you know, who's uh, adopted. I mean, come on, guys, girls, let's go. What's wrong with you? You know, now you're thinking about putting a Hitlery in there, which is even worse. She just continues to show. She's a sick puppy, boy. The queen of her class, the queen of the bells at, when she was in college. That's what they call it, the queen of the bells, the queen of all the girls in, in New England. And she was at it, too, let me tell you. No wonder why Bill chases everything he sees. He's not getting anything at home, that's for sure. As you found out already, it's not Hillary, uh, Chelsea's not her child, it's not his child, either. Uh, he's been going through this shit with her, and she's had to put up with it with him. He gets caught, though. She doesn't get caught because... The girl on girl thing isn't talked about too much. But it's prevalent and it's there. It's been there a long time. A marriage of convenience, as I say. The machines. Oh, yeah. I talked about the machines earlier. I touched on uh, how it's helped me, which it has. Uh, there'll be more machines coming, up, coming in. Uh, we got a lot of people in line for those machines, and I tried to get all of us from our site into the best position possible, so that they can get them when they need them. And some people need a week, two weeks, month, but I tried to stick them in. But you're going to have to come in and provide Richard with dates, because they're active. The people in uh, Germany, they're active, and they need to know. Because when they travel and they go and they pick up the materials to make the machines and so on, uh, they need to know how, what they're buying, how much they're buying. 
because they make them and they bring them back. And if you want them, you need the date. You can't call me and say, and I, I do my best to help you, but you can't call me and say, Neil, I need, I'd like the machine in two days or three days. It doesn't fly like that. There's a lot of people now. There's about four, what was there? Uh, about 175 people ready to buy now, but they don't have dates. But it's all going to be in a couple of months. So you know, we any time between now and a couple of months. I'm going to Ireland. I'm going to be setting up help setting up a clinic there because I'd like to have I, I, the Irish need a clinic with all this new technologies, including free energy. Uh, you know. Our free energy can take care of your home. But the bottom line to the energy is that uh, it uh, can also do a whole entire city. Yes, as I was saying, we're going to have the a clinic in Ireland in the very near future. And, it, and my friends are bringing in now, which is their patent, and they, they've already, the things have been, the machines have been put together, they've been, they've been uh, uh, tested at a uh, major medical, med medical university, or actually institution. You know, it's huge and it's, uh, it's very credible, you know? That's what I like, is the credibility, because it's probably the best in the world. That place is uh, where all the, all the big boys go, right? Putin and everybody. Anyway, we're going to have a blood machine to handle, handle the blood that goes through your body, so it regulates properly, cleans the plaques off the... Off, uh, off your, uh, out of your arteries and so on, so uh, it, it moves smoothly. Uh, the veins, even to your brain, will be clear. And uh, we're going to have a, a bone machine. And the bone machine is, uh, if you break a bone, that, this is what I heard, and I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but I'll know when I get there. The bone machine is, if you break a bone, you don't need to go have your, your, your bone mended, uh, whatever, uh, anybody cutting into your body to fix it that's done. The machine will do that for you and your, your bones will come together as they're supposed to. Uh, there's a cancer machine which is just focused on cancer. All kinds of cancer including bone cancer. The healing the healing machine ha also handles the cancer but it takes longer because you're, you're going to be going to take that machine home with you. Uh, these machines I'm talking about now, you, you go to the clinic and you receive the help. And then there's a 23 year machine so you go in, and you want, it's similar to the healing healing machine, healing computer. You go in, you hold on to the things. I'm going to show it to you in a couple of days. You're going to hold on to them again, I guess. It's smaller, and it's more powerful. And it rejuvenates all your internal organs back to what they were 23 to 30 years ago. They call it the 23-year machine. I say 25. But they tell me it can extend to 30 or more. So, I mean... Your heart is going to get younger, your kidneys, your liver, your stomach, your intestines, everything inside is going to get cleaned up, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a new world there for us. So all these people with these, a, a, looking to, to prolong their lives, like the bushes and so on, <coughs> traveling to Hong Kong, and it's Switzerland getting the mercury shots, that's uh. That's one thing. They get five years, maybe, in their life. This is so much more and so much less. Uh, they're bringing those machines back, I understand. I'll let you know for sure. And it's, it's all going to be an incredible time with all this stuff happening. I'm going to go soon, like I said. And I'll, if it's there, I'll get to see it. I'll get to run it. And we'll, uh, and we'll put it on out there for you to see so you know these things exist. They've existed for a while. I knew about them eight years ago, seven years ago with Peter, and he had the patents, and he explained to me these things, and now Walter and uh, and Etchum have, and, and, and they have the, the patents and the rights to them amongst their own stuff as well, and they're doing a fantastic job. So, and they're friends. I mean, free energy's coming. They're all coming. It's all coming. And... All I can say now is, uh, Jesus, I'm like, Jesus. I think there's something under the table, Russ. Grabbing my leg. Somebody pulling my leg. <laughs> yeah, Russ, seriously, something down there. 
come and try to drag me down. Anyway, uh, M2 and M3 and everybody, they're all waiting for this posting. I, I've said as much as I can say. We're going to have to do the connecting of the dots. We're going to have to systematically take everything down, and we're going to have to put back our things in their place. Okay, we got to fix it. We can't break it any further. So we don't want to break it, the banks or anything. You break a bank down, take it down, destroy it, it'll take another 20 years to put one up. We have to fix it. We have to do it right. Anyway, Count Albert, enjoy yourself over there. I'll be getting to you with the dates for your uh, for your, your trip to uh, take care of yourself. Once I get it, you'll get it. Okay, I'm going to be talking today. You all take care. Uh, M2, you probably put somebody under, under the table to bother me. But uh, <laughs> you're a ghost. Uh, anyway, I'm joking. You all take care, and I'll talk to you soon. I have to get done. It's early here. The sun's coming out now, finally, and it's time to rest a little bit. I've been up since three, three thirty. Talk to you later. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye for now.